<laughs> it's just getting worse and worse. I felt myself getting annoyed and frustrated with how it wasn't turning out the way I wanted to. A lot of us are very hard on ourselves. It's not often shared online. Hello. So this is not the video I initially set out to make this week. <laughs> I wanted to make a beautiful, relaxing forest painting video and just really focus on creating some lovely forest art. But then life threw me some curveballs, and now I'm just dealing with it. So in a way, it worked out because I've, I've been wanting to make a video kind of like this for a while based on a lot of comments I've received over the past year or so. Um, it seems like a lot of people think that painting just comes so easy to me and probably a lot of people that we never get frustrated or we don't have bad days, but trust me, it happens. <laughs> so I guess that's kind of what this video is about, but I'm also going to take you to the forest and I'm gonna show you how I deal with having hard days. And then we'll come back here and have a little chat. Hello, welcome to a forest. <laughs> I am PMSing and I am insanely stressed about the final stages of my visa. It's like all consuming. I'm, I'm like up to here in anxiety. So I need forest therapy. I need to get back to nature. This is the only thing that really calms me down just hiking through the forest and um, right now in Scotland the end of summer in early autumn the heather is blooming in Scotland and it's amazing bright purple and pink flowers everywhere <laughs> um, but this forest is much more mossy green there's definitely areas that have heather um, but I'm not sure if the area I'm walking in is gonna be that so for now, we'll just see what we find. I'll make my way along the trail and stop at some point for some sketching. This tree overhanging the path, the roots coming down, that's so cool. I just love mossy trees. <laughs> this spot actually if I can find a little thing on the side of the trail oh, that's kind of cool oh I like that composition look here's a bit of heather you can kind of see these are very light purplish pink. Oh, I like this path leading down there because way down there it's kind of bright and then it gets really dark and then the path comes out into the light again. So it's got a lot of light to play with. And when the sun comes out, it's even more dramatic. I've painted here a few times and I always find something different. Here's 
here is my lovely view. But first, it's the just quiet observation. I stopped at the store on the way here to get a snack and I was like, yes, caffeine. <laughs> so I'll drink my iced coffee and then just find peace. Today I have my portable painter with my dried gouache. I accidentally let the white gouache spill a little here, so it's kind of mixing already, but, and it's also getting all over me, but whatever, <laughs> it's fine. Um, but this little bag, I'm keeping all my little bits and bobs in it just to keep it organized in my backpack because today I just wanted to keep it really simple. And I went out more with like a hiking mindset rather than a painting mindset. So there's a couple little brushes and pencils in here. Um, but otherwise, I, I didn't want to carry like a ton of stuff. So keeping it simple. This is just an easy way to organize things in a really big backpack. <laughs> and today I have my Stillman and Burn Alpha Series sketchbook. I was turned on to this sketchbook by Ian Stewart, the artist I took a workshop with recently, the watercolor workshop in Fife. Uh, I have a video about that if you want to go watch that. But this is one of the sketchbooks he loves and I was kind of skeptical because the paper is so thin but this is double-sided gouache and you can see it's completely fine it's not like super warped or anything I don't love it for watercolor but I, it's because I'm not used to it yet I love it for gouache though because it's just got a little bit of tooth to it I also absolutely love it for drawing so it's kind of a good mixed media sketchbook um, especially when I just want like really stress-free <laughs> I don't worry about messing this up because it uh, has so many pages and the papers are a little bit thinner so I already kind of get into a very sketchy mindset when I use it. Anyways, let's just start sketching. <laughs> I've been using graphite pencils lately but today I brought this one just because I didn't want to bring a sharpener and I love blue. In a lot of my past videos you see me using blue pencils. <laughs> So when I'm out doing these little sketches, trying to keep it very chill, no pressure, I love doing these tiny thumbnails. And it's also good for working out different compositions that I might like. Wow, that light is changing quickly. Taking your time while you sketch is good though. Just work things out until you're ready to paint. I've got these little travel brushes today. One is a flat, one is a round, but they're both quite small because I'm working really small. <laughs> I want some warm, pops of green in here. I am basically painting over all the trees I drew back there. When I drew them, it was kind of just a way to start myself off, think about the composition ahead of time, and I'm keeping that vision in mind now as I paint. So, like, I have to come back in and paint those trees now with opaque paint. Um, once I'm done with the all the foliage in the background because I want to go I want to create a nice blend between this dark green and the lighter greens back there
Okay, I've done a little gouache sketch. Just saw this tree over here that I love. The shadows are amazing. So just going to do a little vignette of that. A little study of that, I mean. And then probably head out. funny whenever I say something like that it, the, the little study sounds so casual and it ends up taking me ages <laughs> whenever you are doing the first layer of gouache <laughs> keep telling yourself that it's okay if it looks totally insane the reason it's okay is because it is opaque. You can paint on top of everything you're doing. And actually I find it easier to make things more realistic or, or to get to the point I like the painting um, once I have a base layer down. So this first layer just gives you something to start with and to like build all that depth. So actually the crazier the first layer looks the better the more abstract it looks the better because it's going to be so far in the back of the painting by the time you're done that that abstraction really lends itself to like a lot of depth in the forest or kind of really any scene it doesn't have to just be a forest I'm, I'm also watering it down quite a lot just to get something on the page because I'm going to be building up the layers although now at this point I wish I had a bigger brush <laughs> it's a little bit of a struggle to fill in a big area with such a small brush pretty much all the moisture gets sucked out of the brush after a few brush strokes, a few sweeps of color. There, got a little craziness going. I'm gonna let that dry. I had to take a little break from filming for a minute because I just was not able to concentrate. I think because my, I'm just so preoccupied with my visa and just, <laughs> I really wanted to be in the moment. Anyways, it happens sometimes, but I am at a stopping point to let the page dry. So I thought I would show you where I'm at and then we'll do some final details and final layers. But yeah, the sun came out again, which is just making the be most beautiful shadows. I'm standing up as well. This is my little desk for now. <laughs> We've got our little trees here. So I'm painting... I'm painting this tree cluster here, but I changed uh, the composition a little bit. I simplified it a lot, actually. It's just focusing on light at the moment. <laughs> just getting worse and worse so yeah I'm gonna take a break maybe walk around a bit and it's just so peaceful here <laughs> I had to end the session because I felt myself getting 
annoyed and frustrated with how it wasn't turning out the way I wanted to. Today I wanted to give myself this just peaceful opportunity to just be in the forest and distract myself, which is kind of why I decided to make a video out of it because it helps with the distraction part of it. <laughs> When I'm this stressed and this worried about something in my personal life, art and nature are like the thing that really gives me something to, positive to focus my energy on. But it doesn't mean it's always going to go well. <laughs> uh, I just took a, like a really beautiful 30 minute walk of silence through the forest and now I feel a thousand times better. I, but I wanted to talk about this because... I'm sure I'm not the only one and I know there's people out there who go through this as well. A lot of us are very hard on ourselves. We expect so much and if we don't get the results we want, it can just feel like total failure. And I'm here to tell you that you are absolutely not a failure. This happens to everyone and I have heard interviews with some of the top artists in the world where they say similar things. It's just, um, it's not often shared online. So a lot of young artists or new artists or people who are at the beginning stages of learning don't often hear it or see it happening. And so they feel like they're the only one. I know this because I went through it as well and I still go through it. But it's so important to just, when you get into that mindset of, or, or that moment of, oh, I am just the worst artist in the world, and why do I even bother? Nothing turns out the way I want it to. You know, that negative spiral. <laughs> as soon as you catch yourself doing that, it's so important to stop, take a deep breath, step away from the painting, and look at where you are in the world. Like for me in this moment, I'm in this gorgeous forest on a beautiful day. And I think a lot of artists, we directly link our own value, our own worth to what we create and what we're able to share, um, which can be really harmful to our self image. And I'm not saying like, you know, go out and have a huge ego. <laughs> Try to remember that in the moments that are really hard where you feel like a failure because you're not. <laughs> we all go through this. Uh, and just remember that it's a process. Like every single time you go out and paint, you learn something, even if it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> I still ended up being like really harsh on myself. And because I didn't paint it the way I thought I... I saw it in my head. I just got, I put myself down. I personally always want to share the ups and downs because it gives a more broad, a real picture of what it's like to try to learn how to paint. When you are trying to learn how to paint on your own without taking any kind of like professional level art class or anything like that, it's all about repetition and practice. Practice doesn't make perfect, practice makes progress. So don't expect perfection. And anyway, what is perfection? <laughs> Let's not go into that right now, but <laughs> expect progress. So that's the thing I always try to remind myself. In that moment where I'm like putting myself down, I stop and I say, you just made progress. That is awesome. Next time some little thing will have already clicked in your mind and you won't even know it, but it'll be a little bit easier. <laughs> this is the dense section. So if there's one piece of advice that you take away from this video, it's to be gentle with yourself during your learning stages, which to be honest is going to be forever. We're never done learning. And I think that's kind of exciting. So I try to see it in that light where it's not, we're not chasing perfection, we're chasing progress. And I'll, I will be chasing progress forever. It gives me something to look for, forward to. <laughs> okay, I feel like I'm just repeating myself now. Let's enjoy the rest of this walk together.
so soft. I love it. Well, I'm back home and I had a little break and uh, I don't hate it as much as I did earlier, <laughs> which tends to happen. I think that once we, t we step back a little bit, uh, give ourselves some space from what we just created, uh, whether it's an hour or days or weeks or years, um, I tend to do that quite often where I just rest my eyes, I rest my mind, I focus on something else for a while, and then when I look back at it, I see it more objectively, and I separate that anxiety and that frustration I was feeling from the finished result. And now when I look at this, I just see memories of this beautiful day in the forest, which is awesome because I want my sketchbooks to be, you know, happy places for me. <laughs> It's easy to give advice. It's a whole other thing to follow it yourself. And, you know, in, in a lot of my videos, I'm giving advice or just talking about the mindset of an artist. Um, but I don't like a video today where I'm showing what, it, what I go through when I'm actually experiencing those frustrations is a little bit more rare. And I don't mean it for, for it to be. It's just usually when I'm feeling those things, I'm not recording because I it's like the last thing on my mind. So I hope that this video helps at least one person out there not feel totally alone <laughs> or, you know, make more people realize that this is a very normal part of the process. And I think ultimately it's really important not to let those frustrating moments completely um, overpower all the amazing good moments and the fact that you are making progress like little by little painting by painting sketch by sketch you're making progress and I know I remember there were times in my past when maybe like a year or two into painting when it seemed like every single painting I did was just the worst painting in the world and at the time I was trying to share more of what I painted every day um, I was trying to post daily basically on social media <laughs> and it just so many times I felt like crap when I did that. I was like, oh, I'm going to share this and I absolutely hate it. And it's amazing when you do that because at that time I thought it was terrible, but then people would comment on it and be like, wow, this is beautiful. And so someone else sees it from a fresh perspective. They're not in your head thinking all those negative thoughts or, or seeing what's wrong with it. They see it with their own unique vision of the world and their own life experience and a lot of times they see things you don't see uh, or as they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder which is so true with art it's all subjective <laughs> and we might hate something we make but it might be absolutely gorgeous to someone else so try to put it all in perspective I think that's really important to remember because there's not a single painting you're gonna do that's gonna like break your career or break your spirit. It might feel like it sometimes, but there are gonna be so many paintings in the future that lift you up and you'll know you hit like another level in your skills. And that's really exciting to look forward to. So try to count the successes as much as the failures. <laughs> Anyways, I am gonna wrap this video up. Hope it was helpful. Hopefully it inspired someone out there to keep going and just remember to try to have fun along the way. That's what it's all about. Okay, that's the end. Let's go see what Floki's doing. <laughs> what is he doing? Oh, is he going out? Wait, don't dig in my garden. He digs up my garden all the time. <laughs> he loves to dig in the dirt. You wanna see? Let's go play. Let's go play in the dirt. So I'll take the stick. Put it in the dirt. 